Okay, welcome everybody. This is uh, the final lecture in this uh, very nice series. Uh, and uh, this is, uh, so uh, if you want to ask questions, so this is the last opportunity you have. So please, uh, hopefully, we have a more active session this time. Uh, okay, Shamik, so you can take away. Yeah, so thanks. So I'll uh, start. Okay, so this is the last lecture and in fact, uh, okay. So I will be talking about the image view uh, graviton scattering amplitudes. So okay. So one can also talk about the gluons, but I will not be talking about the gluons in this year because, well, I mean, only the uh, C. The symmetry algebra will change, but the methods will uh, remain the same. So I'll be discussing just this one. Okay. Okay. So the point is that so there are uh, lots of things actually in this thing. So I'll not be able, so most of the things. I mean, I'll just uh, talk about the basic thing, the central things actually, but the I mean, there are details, I mean, which play a role, but uh, well, we, we will not have time to go into that. So for that, you can actually uh, look at this, uh, our work. Mm. So I will refer to that at various places in fact, okay. So, okay, so I'll just state now that, I mean, why actually we are interested in why image via amplitude. Okay, so the image V amplitude, so well, so they are kind of the, so image V, well, so these are like, uh, well, all, all the things are actually free level. So there is no loops and things like that. Okay, so that is implied here. Okay, so I'll not be explicitly uh, mentioning this. So why MHV amplitudes? So MHV amplitudes are short of the simplest objects. The simplest uh, scattering amplitudes. Uh, okay, and but well, so this is a very qualitative uh, description. So let me start with uh, what are image V amplitudes. Okay, so these are amplitudes of the form say minus minus plus plus all plus. Okay, so basically. Uh, you have two negative helicity graviton and rest are positive helicity. Okay. Okay, so these are called uh, MHV amplitudes. Now, the important uh, fact about the MHV amplitudes, well, important fact about tree level scattering amplitudes, not uh, that well, the tree level scattering amplitudes in GR. So by GR, I mean just uh, where basically the action is just, you don't have any other term, okay? So in GR is that amplitudes, um, the important is amplitudes of this form, like all plus is equal to zero. Yes, yeah, so is there any question? Oh, okay. 
So then, and also amplitudes of this form that minus plus, so one negative helicity and the rest are plus. So this amplitude is also zero. Okay, now this is crucial. Okay, so now what does it tell us? So it basically tells us is that in the, if I consider, say, what I mean by the image V sector, suppose is the set of all image V. So the first uh, non vanishing tree level amplitude is this actually, uh, minus, minus, all plus. And also the other ones like uh, well you have like two plus and less minus the basically the conjugate of this okay the basically the non vanishing okay now the set of all image v amplitudes. So these are amplitudes of this form to minus and the rest are plus. Okay, now this particular thing, I mean this uh, particular thing, so that uh, tells us that in the MHV sector, uh, okay. Uh, there is no negative helicity soft graviton. So this is important. Okay. So uh, why is that? So you can take an amplitude of this form. Okay, and then make one of the minus say soft. Then it will go into some, uh, then the amplitude will factorize. So you will have some factorization here. I mean, some soft factor here times amplitude of this form. Then this is actually zero, right? Because of this, this property. That means, so this implies that no negative helicity soft gravity. So this is a cru crucial uh, observation. In fact, this tells, uh, this gives you the symmetry of this uh, sector. So what does it tell you? So the symmetry of the image of the sector So what is that? Since I don't have any negative uh, helicity soft graviton, so the symmetry of the MHV sector is that all the symmetries coming from positive helicity soft graviton. So what are those? So those are, you know, one is this super translations of the form. So basically super translations. Like, so they have to here it is P minus one Z. So this is from, from the leading soft graviton. Then we have SL to C bar current algebra, which I have already discussed but how it comes from the sub leading of graviton. So I have these three currents, the SL2C bar currents is zero plus minus one. 
okay and you can also talk about the sub sub leading here but the point is that okay i'll not be talking about that but we can i mean we have shown uh, recently that well so basically these two uh, are actually enough that we'll see i mean that why at least in the mhb sec sector you don't really need to go beyond this okay and the important point is that these uh, so we can consider the modes uh, of these algebras so we consider the modes of these algebras okay and similarly okay and they actually form a closed algebra okay so they form a closed algebra <clears throat> okay so this was already uh discussed but the things that uh, i mean this is something uh, which is uh, the main point actually i mean they form a closed algebra and the thing is that the mhb sector is actually governed by these closed algebra of symmetries okay so this is basically uh what we found uh, okay so now uh, i will talk about the ops so you can talk about the op op of uh, graviton or the but the point is that well i mean you need to okay, try this thing you can do it from the if you if you start from the mhp am, amplitude that this op uh, so suppose i take so consider basically to outgoing positive helicity gravitons Okay. Inserted at the points z1, z1 bar, and z2, z2 bar with dimensions delta one and delta two. Okay. And how does the op look like? So that will take some space. So let me go to the next page. So I will write down the few terms in the op. Okay, so I'll uh, and there are of course an infinite number of terms, but uh, I'll write down only a finite number of terms, and these terms of course look like this. So the first term. we have already written down okay then
and there are of course other terms okay so you can see that so we what we can see is that the uh, that the subleading terms in the op so this is the lead leading piece you can call if you take a holomorphic uh, op limit where you take z1 to n to 0 so with uh, z bar 1 to n fixed okay and we can see that the subleading terms in the OPE are really, okay, are super translation that is super translation of the form are super translation and SL to C bar current algebra descendants. So you can compute more terms actually just if you want to convince yourself that this is indeed true. Like over what is true is that this this particular fact, uh, the thing that we talked about that this uh, in, in MHB sector is completely determined in terms of this uh, this SL to C bar algebra and the super translation. So you can try to convince yourself that well, I mean, one way to see this is to just compute the OP, okay, and see uh, if you are if you can write them in this way actually. Uh, okay, so this basically tells you that it is indeed so. So you can actually actually do the same thing for uh, G plus G minus, but I will not write so you can look at there. So it is indeed true that MHB sector is governed by the currents. these currents and this okay so this is one way to see this actually you just look at the what are the subleading terms and if they can be uh, written as descendants of this okay so i did not mention one thing which is that here the delta is given by delta 1 plus delta 2 minus 1 okay so that is the delta okay so now so now the question is the following okay so first of all so 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 this can be done in particular i mean you can actually find this uh, the subleading terms in particular this op coefficients like these coefficients right okay or these OP coefficients are there. So these, so the OPE, the subleading OP coefficients OP coefficients can be determined from the symmetry algebra symmetry algebra if you demand that both sides of the op transform in the same way that means the op is actually uh, 
invariant under this infinite dimensional series in a free algebra. Trans both sides of the demand that both sides of the OP transform in the same. under the algebra. Okay. So this is exactly the way it works in the case of two dimensional uh, conformal field theory, field theory. Like, well, I mean, depending on what kind of algebra you have, so you can actually find out uh, like uh, the subleading OP coefficients by demanding that both sides can be, uh, well, both sides transform in the same way. But the point is that what cannot be determined in this way is this coefficient, this, the, the coefficient of Z bar by Z. So that is like, like the coefficient, like the leading coefficient. So, well, I mean, uh, if you just talk about this, so I have phi i, phi j, then I have some c i j k, phi k plus the descendants of phi k. Now this object is not actually not fixed by the by by the algebra, but we'll see that in this case they are still fixed. I mean, once I look at the what kind of non states are there. Okay, so this also. Uh, you can also determine this uh, beta function in that way. Okay, so I, I'll not do that, but uh, the thing is that I will mention that how that can be done. Okay, so this is important because the point is that so nothing, uh, so nothing in this is actu actually uh, undetermined. So the whole thing is completely fixed in terms, in terms of this infinite dimensional algebra. Okay. So that is the main point, okay? So now uh, I'll be talking, about, well, so now let's uh, talk about the, the basically the app appearance of the null states. Okay. Okay, so to see what kind of null states are there actually, so you, you can do it in two ways. The number one is that completely algebraically. Okay, using the symmetry algebra. and using the definition of super translation and current algebra. Primaries, okay. Okay, so I'll not take this way. So this uh, this has been done. And you can easily get it. So just I mean, well, I mean this. If you are if you want to do it completely algebraically, which we actually wanted to do because we wanted to show that this whole scattering amplitude is fixed by this al algebra, and you don't have to do anything else. But the point is that so well, so that that can be done. You can look at this. But I I will actually do it in a way. Which we also did in that year, but uh, because so we so we will use basically the second way is that we will use the consistency between the OPE and the conformal soft theorems. Now, so this really, so this ob, uh, so this has actually no no analog in ordinary CFTs, in the conventional uh, 
CFT. So I'll actually just just illustrate these these things. Okay, because the other one is purely algebraic. We just do the algebra. Okay. Okay. So let me talk. Uh, start. So I'll. Uh, okay. So let me start with this operator. That uh, this op op. Okay, and let's consider the term which is like order. Uh, so this is the order z one two, z bar one two zero. Okay, so this op actually holds in in the image v sector. Okay, so that is so because this uh, you can see that it seems uh, this is completely determined by the symmetry algebra which comes from the Proxy. Uh, helicity soft graviton, so it must must be true only in, in the MHV sector, but that is what we want to do. Okay, so let's look at the this term, this order z one to z bar one uh, to the power zero. Sorry, to the power zero and z bar one to the power zero. So how does the term look like? So it is this term. So this is uh, to the Okay. Okay. So now the question is that is this op? So so is the order z one two z bar one two to the power zero term in the OPE consistent with the Conformal soft theorems. Okay. Okay. So we'll do it uh, one by one. So the first one is the leading conformal soft theorem. The leading case, which corresponds. So we want to make the G delta one. So we want to make this one soft. Stay so, and in the leading case, this means this one goes to one. Okay, so we know that what is the leading soft graviton, so that we call zero. Sorry, Okay, so this is the leading conformally soft gravity, or the leading soft gravity. Okay, so now what we do is that first, so take the soft limit. At the level of OP, and uh, just match it with the known answer. So this I have discussed that how the OP of this uh, soft graviton with a Primary, say phi, some phi epsilon and h bar z z bar. So, how does that look like? So, it has to match with that mm, and match with the known result. Okay. So, we start with this. So, we start with this uh, OP and make this first, we make it soft. So, we can take this limit and so what I mean by that is that you take this limit
so this of course you, you have the a beta function so this gives you one in this case and you are left to this term sorry this is not equal to but this is just one term g plus okay now what is this object so this is essentially the op of this right But we know that how the so we just look at one particular term, which is like the order z one two to the power zero. So if I just look at this term in this op, then that is essentially given by p minus two point zero g plus delta two. So this is known from the leading soft graphical theorem. Okay, so these two matches, you can see. So this is also p minus two comma zero g plus delta two. This is also the same. Okay, so you don't get anything from here, and it is all and everything is fine. Okay, now I talk about the subleading sub gravitor. So the subleading. So how does this work? So you take delta one going to zero. Okay, so the subleading sub graviton was this. Okay, so now we take the the subleading soft limit um, in the case of uh, at the level of the OPE. Well, we have this beta function and all these things. Okay, so if you do that, um, what you will get is minus delta two, minus two, I think. Okay, let me just check. So this will be J one minus one. Oh, sorry. Okay. Well, but this object, uh, is essentially the OP between the subleading soft graviton. Okay. And if I just look at the, this or this, this term of order z1 to the power zero, that basically the order one term. So what I'll get is, so this must be equal to minus g1 minus one, g plus delta two, z2, z2 bar. Okay, so this we must have. So this, uh, so this is we must have from the subleading of graviton theorem. Okay, or the ACL2C bar algebra, I mean, whatever way you see it actually. 
okay and then the point is that the fact is that so these must match with this okay so and that immediately uh, gives rise to this constraint i mean this relation So this is essentially the relation. So this is an operator relation. Equation which holds inside MHV and PGOs. Okay. So you can, so since this is true for any value of delta t, okay, so a better way of writing this is that you just shift it uh, delta two by, uh, by delta two plus one, okay? And uh, so shifting delta two to delta two plus one, we get, And this again, you can write this as sorry. By so this is the time translation generator. Can just act on this. Because P minus one minus one, this uh, since this is an this is out outgoing. So this essentially just uh, increases the scaling dimension by one and this without any sign. Okay? Because the P minus one minus one acted uh, with like, if you have an epsilon here, then it is epsilon G delta two plus one, but epsilon is plus one. So, and delta 2 you can re replace so basically so the final relation looks like this Okay, so if if I call this state phi, so we can call, we can define an operator or a state. This is right, and this is a statement that so phi is a null state. So this you can also determine completely algebraically. And what I mean by that is that you start with objects like this, plus some coefficient C, which is unknown. Okay. And then you can show using the algebra and the de definition of a null state that this C must have this particular value, which is minus delta minus one, okay? But I'll not do that, you can just look at what. Okay, so this is a null state, and this in particular means that, in, so this is a null state, and this essentially also, be, I can write as minus minus, so this has this form, so plus, 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 any number of plus, must be zero, okay? So this is essentially, the basically we 
uh, inside an image view and picture. Okay, so this is essentially tells you that this is basically the first constraint. Okay, so I'll write them the, uh, down explicitly, but let, let me just talk, talk about uh, uh, one more null state, which is the, I mean, well, I mean, this null state is the simplest one, but this is also very interesting because of, well, I mean, for I mean, if you do it algebraically, then you see that why it is also the more interesting one. But the point is that the other null state, which is the more, uh, the basically the second null state, um, so that has this form you can call it shy and shy has this form okay now this is the important null state in fact this is the only independent null state Okay, so shy is also zero. So this is the second null state, another null state. Okay, and this gives rise to constraints like. zero and this is the second constant and this is the second constraint means i mean this is essentially well you can uh, from here i mean this is the second constraint but this constraint is the uh, main constraint actually um, okay so the point is that so now let me explicitly write down so explicit forms of these constraints Uh, one, one clarification yeah so you can systematically yeah. construct any null state or is there a, i mean it's only known for a, the first no, no, no. You, you can do it for any null state actually and, and will they give us additional constraints on the correlation function no, beyond no no so that actually i'll show the the thing is that the point is that if you look at this null state so that actually that will essentially de determine the scattering amplitude, uh -huh. and then the point is that the others, well, I mean, I mean they they can't give you more than that actually. I see, and because this can be shown. I mean, uh, I mean, the, yeah, okay. yeah. I'll I'll ask my question again after you after you first. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So let me just write it down, and then you see that. Uh, yeah. So okay. So the point is that, so I'll uh, write it down for this, uh, the simpler one, and then I'll just, ex ex well, I mean, this is essentially, so. So we have this file. Ah, uh, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. This is a big mistake. This is not G plus Delta. This is file. So this is the null state. G plus delta is a J binary key. Okay. Okay. So now, how does the explicit? So okay. So how does it look like? So you can consider an amplitude of this form. So G plus delta Z Z bar. And this is an image V amplitude. So you have some, let me call it D sigma i, delta i, z i, z i bar. So out of this i is like, okay, so suppose it's an n plus 
function. So this i will run from say one to n, and since it's it's an a, a MHV amplitude, so out of this n, the two have uh, negative helicity because this is an MHV amplitude and this is plus. Helicity and rest are positive. Okay, so this is the generic form of the scattering amplitude. Okay, and now the point is that you can insert this one, right? So this, so we know that this is zero. So this will be like. A, So if I insert this into this rest of the gravitons, Sorry, this is not phi. So this is essentially the insertion of the phi. So this object is phi, okay? So this must be zero, okay? So now we need to basically know what is the correlation function of this. So we have this, so we get correlation functions of this form. So we need to know these correlation functions of the descendants and a bunch of other primaries. Now this, of course, we know, right? I mean, this was already like we talked. Uh, we talked about this thing when we talked about the SL two C bar Cartan uh, algebra, okay? And for example, uh, in this case, this so this you can write it as a differential operator uh, which actually acts on this uh, yeah so but i mean the differential operator will so i use a different just uh, color of the differential operators And P minus one minus one, this of course acting on G, this is just G, G1. So this object is So this is essentially the statement that the correlation co function of the descendant is known in terms of the correlation function of the primary. And this is a differential operator, which of course we know how to derive from the word identity. And in this case, it is given by So this uh, object, so this object, so 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 this is equal to this object acting on the on the image view amplitude, and similarly you can write down the expression for this descendant, like the other descendant, which is say p minus two comma zero.
and this of course you know from the word identities that this this correlation function of the descendant Okay, this P I, which is is acting on this image V M P J. Okay, so what does this P I does? So it basically uh, shifts the dimension by one. So now you can see that this uh, constraint. So this constraint which we had, so explicitly, if I write it explicitly, so that equation will look like just this. Uh, so let me write it down clearly. This is the image of amplitude is equal to minus delta minus one. Okay, so this is one constraint. Okay, so this is how one uh, like this is how the first constraint looks like. So this is a differential constraint, and the point is that uh, if I mean, so just uh, remember that uh, this null state. So there's the form of this null state uh, that we have here. So that has G plus. So it is. So this null state exists. Well, this particular null state actually exists also for plus minus, but the point is that the null state shine that it turns out that exists only for plus, not minus. So in general, you get n minus two in differential equations. Um, so you get n minus two, uh, these partial differential equations, corresponding to n minus two positive density gravitons in an endpoint Image V amplitude. Okay, so basically you can just so you can choose. Well, I mean, if you have n of them, so you have n minus two positive velocity, and you can apply this equation to each each one of them. 
Okay, so you basically get n minus two equations. Okay, and I, so you can the do so you can do this in the same way for the second uh, null step. And how does that look like? So I'll write down the equation because that is the important one. Uh, because that is the only, basically the uh, equation which determines together with the law of tensing in invariance actually gives you also this uh, equation. This this one, the first constraint. Okay, so the second constraint, of course, looks like this. So the differential equation. Oh, okay. So let me just uh, use a different color. So we get this. So I just transform uh, transfer them. Uh, so I just write them using differential operators. So these are differential uh, uh, operators. MIGV equal to zero. Okay, so this, so if you write it in, uh, I mean, in the same way, so this L minus one, so that is also differential operator given by this, del del Z, similarly L bar minus one is del del Z bar, and this J zero minus one is the differential operator. And similarly, P minus two minus one is the differential operator. And P minus two comma zero used earlier also. PI. So this is essentially the equation. So you have the L minus one, again, you get N minus two equation. So N minus two positive density gravitons uh, in an in point image wave. So this is essentially the story. Okay, so these equations. Uh, you can see that uh, well in the usual CFT, well in the usual two-dimensional conformal field theory. I mean, you have you see equations like these in uh, um, minimal. Uh, well, for example, I mean the ones which actually um, are there already there in the PTZ. Yeah? So these are called the Virasoro minimal models. And those are solved in this same. Okay. Now, one of the main difference is that you can see that here you don't have any holomorphic factorization. Okay. Because you can see that you have both del del z and del del z bar. Okay. 
okay and you can't really i mean not just delta z delta z bar but all these uh, uh, operators which you have they have both z bar and z and also like delta bar i and things like that okay so you don't have any holomorphic factorization and that is the nature of the symmetry algebra algebra which we have here okay now uh, so basically you can say that the the image the sector so it is actually uh, minimal i mean well so you can basically say that the so the image the sector is the minimal model for selection cfts so this actually also gives you a holographic basically explanation of why these amplitudes are simple in in, in some way okay okay so this basically and for why uh, Im image free amplitude sir Okay. okay so you can do lots of things with these uh, differential e equations for example so using these differential so now you can go back to the op okay and there i told you that you can use the uh, the invariance of the op under the symmetry algebra to get all the subleading op co coefficients but what you can't get is this is the coefficient of the term z bar by z which is this this fun, this b, 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 beta function okay this beta of delta 1 minus 1 and delta 2 minus 1 now the point is that now you can use the differential uh, equations to get this okay so in this way the full op is the, i mean including the coefficient of the z bar by zeta is actually completely fixed in terms of this uh, c symmetry algebra okay so this is essentially i think well so i can actually stop here uh, yeah so i think this is a good place to stop so i actually okay so let me mention one more thing which is like like this so i have this delta equal to 1 uh, sorry uh, this delta equal to minus 1 sub subleting symmetry okay but the point is that that does not give, give you more well that gives you new null states but those are actually all determined in terms of the null states of the delta equal to so delta equal to minus one sub subleting symmetry that gives uh, more null states but they are actually determined determined by the null states for delta equal to one zero and the global sub sub leading symmetry. So that's all. So you don't get any more information. You don't need any, I mean, basically the local symmetry, the local algebra, so that does not give you any new information.
okay uh, so yeah so in the image fee sector uh delta equal to 1 0 are enough i mean that's what we just got so because the because the non states for delta equal to 0 and 1 so that completely fixes the amplitude and that uh, and so once you get the amplitude you can easily get all the rest of the factorization at delta equal to my minus one my minus two all this thing okay. yeah so i think i i'll stop here so if you have any question uh you can ask me yeah the other point actually i wanted to, yeah so maybe so like what are the things that well so i think there is too much no but Shomik, before you go on to the open questions can i ask you a couple of questions so the yeah yeah, yeah please uh, yeah uh, so, so can you, uh, okay, so uh, let me just ask you my questions and then you can address them. So the, yeah. just, just so that I don't forget. So the first question is that, can you clarify exactly where the information that this was Einstein's theory, where, where did that go in? And the second question is, uh, how does one uh, recover the original answer in, uh, in the usual Mandelstam variable? Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I have that actually. So I'll just, uh, Sorry, sorry. Yeah, thanks. thanks. Yeah, yeah. So you can yeah. answer in whatever order you want. Yeah. Yeah. So let me first go through this one uh, because well, uh, the second one is uh, more. It's an algebraic case. So the point is that uh, this is where actually it enters. So this is these are the important facts, right? The point so is that are they like initial conditions. I mean, uh, these two conditions. Uh, am I supposed to think of them as initial conditions to the differential equation? No, no, no. No, the thing is that these are like physical thing in the sense that if I say that the MHP sector, okay, so so this particular statement which I made, okay, that the MHP sector is governed by the closed by this closed L algebra, uh, where like where you have this p minus one z p zero z and this j z. So that that is because of this actually. Okay. okay. Because the closure closure depends on that. Closure depends on this condition. Closure does not depend on that. But the fact is that yeah. if you well, for example, so let me uh, well, so this is also related to the open question that suppose you don't have this thing. So uh -huh. yeah. suppose these things are not true. Yes. Okay. Then what will you get? You will get you have both a positive and a negative helicity soft grad grad return. And then the symmetry al algebra will come up in the chain, right? So in that case, basically, well, um, let me so if I have both, then uh, for example, I also get the SL to C. Current algebra. We cut hands like this. Z bar. Remember that. And also, I'll have another new super translation. Okay. And the point is that this SL2C and and SL2C bar they do not close okay so you get a much bigger algebra i see and this whole story will uh, change because you can see for example that uh, well so we know for example in the cfp the most like the most one of the most important thing or perhaps the most important thing is the op okay mm -hmm. So in that case, the fact that we we can write the OP in this form, um, okay, where is the OP? right? In this form that we don't we have just the descendants of the SL2C bar Karaffent algebra and the super translations of the form P minus one Z and P P zero Z, okay? So that is uh, because of that thing. 
that I don't have any for, uh, negative helicities of the gra mm -hmm. graphic on this. Case. But, but if I if I introduce a perturbative parameter which turns these uh, components on perturbatively, is it possible right. to deform your analysis? Well, so the symmetry algebra, of course, is algebra. Like the point is that I mean, I mean uh, these things will change. So that is the thing that we are trying to do actually. So and we and honestly, I mean, so far we have not been able to do it actually. Um, but it is something that we are actively trying that like what happens if you have both of them mm. and basically what is the I mean once I know the full symmetry algebra mm. for, for the full tree level at least the GR I mean no R square or R key term okay things like that and then actually I think then uh, yeah so that will be yeah, so that will be the answer to, I mean, at least the partly the answer to your question. Okay, but the point is that we have to understand this symmetry algebra. Right. This symmetry algebra will play a role. And the second thing that I have not talked about, so since, so this is so one question, so let me uh, just, okay, so I'll come back to this uh, Fox face uh, amplitude. So basically, I think the like the well. So the open questions, of course, it depends on what you want to do. Actually, like uh, there are lots of like you can do it from the space. I mean, well, uh, but for my years, I mean, I'm more interested in, for example, the uh, in the in the dual layer. So there will be, for example, like what is the symmetry, like the. When you have both positive and negative helicity soft gravitons, like there are certain statements, but the point is that there, well, but I think so far, like there, I mean, if you want to work with this uh, scattering amplitude and use all all those things, then it's not in a very useful form. I mean, that's what I will say. So that needs to be worked out. I mean, it's, it's not a question of just. Um, the working it out, but you also have to uh, actually un understand these things. That I, yeah, so there are certain there are both positive and negative helicity soft gravitons. Okay, this is one of the things actually. So this is the first like uh, this is the first thing that one of like to do actually, and secondly is that that what is unitarity in this context. Because uh, this is important because once we know this, this, this will actually, well, perhaps in the dual theory, um, so this may be useful for putting bounds on on couplings of higher derivative operators, for example. So you want to understand uh, space time unitarity from the perspective of the OP? Yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, exactly, 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 precisely. Exactly. That what is that in the dual field? Right? So in this case, the thing is that we uh, so so, so this, I mean there is too much echo. Right? Yeah. Why? Is, because I have turned off my I I can. Yeah, I'm not sure. Let me unmute you and unmute you. Let me see. Maybe that works. Ah, can, can you unmute yourself now uh, and try again? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. No, yeah, so anyway, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Yeah. So that is so basically what what I mean is that yeah. So that is more precise. Like what is space time unitarity from bulk perspective. 
Hey, from boundary perspective. Okay, so this uh, we did, did not need that thing because well, I mean this announced, I mean this primary descendants and and all these things. Well, I mean this could be done actually. I mean well, I mean there are certain there is a certain glitch. If you uh, well null state, well null state. Of course, null there is nothing is null here because we don't have any notion of norm here. So they are all like primary descendants. But then we. Oh, uh, but then we show that the point is that the, these not, I mean, they must be null states because the point is that otherwise the OP will be inconsistent with the conformal soft the theorems which we have, which you know. Okay. So yeah. So these are I think the open question. The first one I think is maybe easy, easier to solve than the second one but both are. i think if you want to basically do the bootstrap i mean uh, putting bounds on coefficients of uh, this r square r cube type of terms then this uh, will i mean this may be useful actually but uh, i don't know so this is one type of thing actually so these are really but okay, so let me give you the answer to the other question actually. Okay, uh, so which which is that I mean how they look like in the Fox space. Okay, so in the so the differential equation in momentum space. So this actually you can just start with these equ equations, for example. You can start with them, okay, and you can replace. Uh, in, you can do it in the following way. Yeah. yeah. So what you can do is that you can make the following replacement. So. Is that the scaling dimension delta that is minus omega i in del del omega i? So remember that this p mu, okay, I'll write it later. So this dimension raising operator is just multiplication by omega i. This operator p minus 1 minus 1, this is replacing by epsilon omega. So with this replacement, if you make this replacement, uh, okay, so let me so go back to this so was parameterized in this. Okay. So if you make this replacement, so those equations become like this. So these are differential operators. Now they are okay. I'll write them down how they look like in the momentum space. So this is the Fox space amplitude. So this is an MHV amplitude equal to zero. And so how do they look like? So this is the, so these are the, operators 
So now I am writing them in the I mean in the momentum space. Okay, and this is how they look like. And this is Omega. Similarly, So that's a lot. So this is now uh, this is now in a completely standard form. Well, I mean, what I mean by this is that if I look at this, uh, so this is essentially the S matrix in the pop basis. Uh, in momentum space. Because it is just an integral transform, right? So if I know something in one uh, basis, then I can always go back to the other one. Some basis in momentum space. Okay, so that is the actually, and similarly, you can write down the other. So here you can see that. Uh, you have explicitly factors of, of the energy uh, appearing here. Right, and uh, how easy is it to solve these differential equations in momentum space and get the 1 over STU answer that we, we are familiar well, with? Was, well, for the four point function. Yeah, two to two, yeah. Yeah, four point function, I think this can be done. I mean, uh, because four point function, the point is that you can just go, I mean, you can, this is just a function of the cross ratio. So you can use that. So basically, you have to use only one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, other questions? Yeah, so I guess you will be trying uh, uh, not just pure gravity, but also gravity coupled with other things, maybe. Uh, yeah, so other things are also yeah, there. So they are also, you can, for example, coupled to the young, young mills theory. Yes. Yeah, so that can also be done actually. So some, well, there actually you have to find out what is the, the, the analog of the MHB sector. In a sense that, well, you don't need to find it, but the point is that if you want, well, at least to start with, if you want a solvable thing, because the symmetry algebra must be something which is known. Mm -hmm. Like in this case, we got this thing, this symmetry algebra and all these things, and then it turns out that this uh, MHB amplitudes have this particular feature that, well, it is completely governed by that. But the point is that if I have both positive and uh, negative helicity soft graviton, gra then the symmetry algebra will be much bigger. And we don't mm -hmm. know at this point. Yeah. So that is uh, so. This is, so the point is that of course if we don't like just like in the two-dimensional conformal theory, like 
like this they like the conformal filters which which can be solved exactly they are more or less like they form a set of measure almost z zero actually right like well some discrete values between c well right yeah z two and one so in this case also we don't expect that all the amplitudes can can be solved in this way like almost no amplitude will be solved in this way mm -hmm. but the thing is that then you have to actually set up the booster right right yeah yeah so that is the thing to actually aim for i think i mean if you want to use this thing so yeah. so my purpose was not basically to to get the expression for this uh, image the amplitude because that is already known but right. the point is that the fact that these can be determined from a calculation which does not refer to a bulk space time uh, so that was the thing yeah. which uh, yeah right yeah. that's right that's right yeah. yeah but the point is that one has to set up the bootstrap for this mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if one wants yeah. to really use this thing right. i think one has to set up the bootstrap i mean just the way it is set up i mean you know more than me right, right. right. so that okay uh, i think we should thank uh, shamik for eight very patient and very nice uh, these for my, uh, me very nice lectures and uh, thankfully they are all available online and uh, uh, hopefully uh, whoever wants can go uh, over the notes and the videos uh, at your leisure and learn uh, more thoroughly about this uh, area uh, so shamik is going to give us the the final set of notes as well and uh, all all will be online by by tomorrow at the latest yeah so, so actually the final note i have i have to actually edit it a bit but okay. i mean okay. i will actually okay. upload yeah but okay. it is almost there actually very good very good okay. so uh, thanks for listening <laughs> i mean it was a good no it was uh, it was very nice uh, yeah because i had to go through all the things yeah uh, yeah absolutely yeah yeah so i think the next set of pedagogical lectures uh, we have uh, Uh, one lined up in july by rajesh who's going to talk about the, uh, the, the 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 free angle string dual uh, oh, okay. but before that uh, we will see if uh, i don't think uh, party at least uh, party when i don't have anybody lined up anyway we will be in touch so thank you very much and i'll stop recording here okay thanks